Hello everyone, welcome back and a happy new year to you. So uh, before we begin to look at the uh, US market indices and then uh, we're going to look at the STI. So uh, let's look at the whole uh, 2022 outlook. Okay, so this is the chart again, which compile the um, historical performance of uh, the S&P 500 from 1994 all the way to uh, 2021. So uh, excluding 2021, which uh, we saw the uh, performance of the uh, indices has been uh, largely uh, aligned to uh, what happened in the past. Um, let's uh, look at how uh, 2022 would uh, perform. So uh, let's start off with January. What we are looking at is that uh, we have a mixed month in January. Most of the time we see some... Uh, positive and uh, negative performance. So uh, if the, the market ends negative uh, in January, likelihood there is a chance uh, for it to uh, recover and then uh, see some upward movement in February, then uh, towards March. And it uh, tends to peak in April and starts to uh, uh, come down uh, towards May and then uh, build a bottom in uh, June, then uh, towards July, and uh, June and July would be, um, you know, sort of like a, a weak month towards August, September, then start to recover towards November peak, and then December, we have another likely positive month. So uh, next year, the key thing is the interest rate, and the tapering. So what is going to happen is that if uh, the market see this as a positive sign, because uh, one of the important thing that uh, we must understand about interest rate and uh, tapering. So the first reason why it needs to taper because you know, the, they see some uh, economic activities recovery uh, pretty fast. And then why they need to increase interest rate is because of the inflation has been going up. So what we want to uh, look at is that next year, GDP numbers goes up, inflation numbers stabilize, then the market has a chance to continue to go higher. Now in a rising interest rate environment, the economic activity has to go up in order to uh, uh, see stock market goes up. Now, if the market doesn't have this, then of course uh, we tend to see a weak market ahead. So um, in my experience, uh, when the Fed increased interest rate, uh, the economic activity goes up. Although those uh, interest rate sensitive companies like the REITs, for example, would uh, suffer short-term downside, but overall long-term, we would see uh, upside. Why? Because there are more economic activities, more rental reversion, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, what uh, we want to see next year is that uh, hopefully the Omicron virus uh, or the Omicron variant uh, is uh, proven to help the endemic to happen. And then this is where you can start to see more traveling, uh, more uh, people willing to set up business, renting uh, spaces to set up their business to uh, help the REITs to grow up and more uh, office activity. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> before I uh, you know, go into the indices again, let's uh, look at the, the other scenario where we have a positive uh, January. So if we have a positive January, then we may see some weakness in February towards March, then it built up and recover towards a peak uh, of the, or April. And then, uh, then we start to see uh, May sell off. So you can see that generally the uh, May seems to be a uh, net zero month, most of the time, okay, net zero month or slightly positive month. Okay, then June, we have uh, mostly bottom uh, month. Uh, some months are positive in some year. And then July, we have a small peak, but uh, we do have occasion that we have uh, some negative months. So during uh, this period, if you were to look at the chart, uh, the uh, uh, months that typically you would see more gains are likely to be uh, falling in April and November. So uh, do take note. Let's go to the um, 
the uh, US indices uh, right now. So let's go to the chart. Okay, so um, this is where we are going to you know, go through uh, why the, um, the chart is useful. First of all, uh, we want to see that it, um, in the month of December, which uh, recorded slight positive as per the chart says, uh, let's look at this. This is 30th of November. So this is Dow Jones closing on the 30th of November. And this is the closing of Dow Jones uh, on the 31st December 2021. So we can see a, a positive 5.4%. Okay. And uh, then S&P 500, this is the... Uh, this is the um, 30th, 30th of uh, November closing. And then this is the um, 31st December S&P 500 closing. We are up 4.4%. So the month of December has recorded uh, quite a decent growth. And then NASDAQ 100, uh, we see a small gain of 1.1%. ,1 so out of these um, three indices, of course, Dow Jones performed the better one perform the best rather okay uh, let's look at uh, what is going to be uh, next week so since this is the first this is going to be the first week of the market trading in 2022 so we shall see what happened so Dow Jones hit the resistance as expected we mentioned this in a previous video so we have uh, 36,588 tested uh, but it fails to break out. So it pulled back at the end of uh, 31st of December 2021 to close the year uh, in the red. But overall, the month is still positive by up by 5.4%, as I mentioned earlier. So what we want to see is that we have a, a positive upward movement right now uh, back towards this high as uh, Dow Jones attempted to break out from its resistance and touches this uh, level at 36687. And once it breaks out from this uh, 36687, then uh, we have a chance to uh, continue higher and where Dow Jones can hit to. Now, uh, if I were to do a uh, rough projections, typically a... Um, the breakout would help to bring the Dow to uh, some level, right? So uh, which level are we looking at? Uh, we have a, uh, a more aggressive projections, which could be around 38,744. So if the market sees uh, the uh, economic uh, GDP numbers are going up, then uh, we can see these uh, potential numbers get tested okay so let's let's look at the smaller scale okay so a smaller scale movement uh, for Dow Jones in the short term basis uh, we probably may see only slight movement towards this uh, 37,209 okay get tested if it breaks high and then continue to go up higher so uh, what is it going to be? Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, curious and then I'm going to watch on as well. So uh, let's look at the S&P 500. S&P 500 broke out from its resistance over here uh, as uh, we expected 4744 and I projected the target level at 5008. And uh, since the breakout, S&P 500 has been consolidating uh, at the towards at the top and um, you know refusing to close a year higher uh, it forms a somewhat a flag pattern over here and of course if we can break out our uh, high recent high over here at 4810 then uh, it may have a chance to go back to uh, 5008 so really really we are looking at a uh, a strong upward breakout to continue its uh, recent bull run um, if it couldn't break up, then uh, we have a support at 4744 uh, for it to retest and bounce off from there. Then we have NASDAQ 100, which pulled back to uh, retest its uh, previous uh, recent turn support right now. It is slightly lower, but um, it still looks like a flat pattern over here, which it needs to uh, rebound higher okay, to... Uh, 
to look at this uh, 16,766. Okay, so this is the key resistance for NASDAQ 100 to test. Although it still has the uh, minor uh, resistance now because it forms this level of resistance as it failed to trade past 16,615. Okay, so this is the uh, minor reason which it needs to break. So in order to continue higher, it needs to clear these uh, two resistance. Okay, now um, just a little bit of uh, sharing of my experience is that uh, we realized that uh, throughout the whole year of 2021, uh, whenever the yield interest yield or the bond yield rather, the bond yield uh, goes up, the NASDAQ tend to sell down. Um, so I read some articles, what people have been writing, commenting. Um, so since like the... Uh, the NASDAQ valuation is tied to the bond yield because um, they tend to sell the bond to uh, and then uh, to, to uh, sell the NASDAQ as well. Why? Because uh, the funds of the, or the valuation of the NASDAQ ties to the uh, bond yield. And it uh, seems like they are doing some funds uh, borrowing that, you know, uh, that is used to buy the NASDAQ, okay? So why do I make this comment is because in the past, you have never heard of when interest or rather the bond yield goes up, NASDAQ got sold down. For many years since the interest rate has came down, the, um, the Fed interest rate has came down, then uh, we start to, start to experience this where bond yield goes up, NASDAQ got sold down. So, it got really got to do with uh, the source of the fund that has been used to buy up the NASDAQ market. And uh, why the bond yield goes up and NASDAQ comes out is because they have to uh, sell uh, NASDAQ stocks to uh, recycle the fund to go back to uh, some uh, you know, repayment or something, uh, which I, I, I cannot understand. I don't have the full details of it. But then, but this is going to change, I believe, uh, depending on how they fund the, 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 the purchase or the buying of the stock market. So all this, uh, we will continue to look out and then uh, see uh, any changes uh, in the uh, market where uh, the flowing of funds would uh, come differently. And uh, one day you might find that uh, the bond yield would decouple from less than 100 you know, all together. So all these uh, market changes, um, uh, we have to take note, okay? So why do I make this comment again is also because, you know, if you notice last time when uh, the uh, oil goes up, short up, the stock market tend to come down, you know, all this kind of relationship in the past, okay? So uh it changed right now because now even oil goes up, it doesn't affect the stock market anyway. So uh, you can see the relationship change. Yep. So this is my comment. So along the year 2022, we were going to watch how the market evolved, how the funds flow again. And then this is where we're going to go uh, updating in the video again. STI, um, as I mentioned uh, previous video, you can look at all the previous drawings, which I haven't changed. We, you have seen the arrow uh, that I've drawn. So if SDI no weakness, no double bottom, we, we see more upward movement to retest 3137. Then if a breakout can happen successfully, the next level is 3162. So far, you follow the first path. It didn't take the second path, which I would hope for a double bottom. So what happened now is that you can see SDI fail to Cross this 3137 resistance. So this uh, resistance turned major right now. So from a minor level, it turns into major. So what we are going to look forward is that uh, if the market, once it goes up, it has to break above 3137. Okay, then the next reason will be 3132. So what's the outlook for SDI? So we are looking at a... Um, a year of uh, uncertainty again, where um, whether the economic activities can open up, like for example, SIA is going to uh, can fly to all, a lot of more countries, 
where um, the endemic comes, it also helps comfort Dell grow, also help uh, uh, all the travel relating uh, company. So uh, we, we, we have to uh, look at all this uh, all over again. And then uh, we are looking at um, the, uh, if the endemics were to come, so uh, that would uh, affect the gloves company, the medical companies where they will go back to where they were uh, because uh, their earnings will get affected, impacted uh, badly. So these are the things that uh, we are going to look at. So throughout the whole 2021, we can see the STI has been in a side way, um, which is not new. It had been in a sideways in, uh, in 2019 before the uh, market collapsed due to the, uh, the COVID cases. And then uh, this is where the bottoms was formed, then recovered. So, um, it is very normal for STI to go sideways, okay? And uh, what we are expecting next year, hopefully it can retest the high. If not, um, the consolidation towards the lower end would tell us potential uh, more downward movement. So if uh, we don't break up, so let's take a look at this uh, particular uh, year where uh, we are looking at 2017 or 2018 rather, you can see uh, it moved up, but it failed to uh, you know, uh, test the high. Over here, you can see it moved up, but it failed to test, we test this high and then eventually breaks down and go down lower. Then even the rebound doesn't break new high and then sell off. Then we can see down, downward movement. So all these are a factor where you can see that the market goes into a, 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 a trendless movement. Okay, so we are looking at uh, this 2022 may happen the same. Okay, so yeah, just watch out for that. Okay, and uh, we are looking at next year how China is going to, um, China government is going to handle their tech. Uh, counters because uh, the whole year of 2021 where US market has been very bullish going all time high the Hang Seng market was down beaten um, now it's more than 25% uh, okay, it hit the low of 27% uh, and uh, almost to the COVID low and uh, due to the Chinese government's crackdown the whole market was down throughout the year. So whether next year will be a recovery year where they straighten out their policy and help the counters, the companies to uh, go, go back to their growth trajectory, then uh, we may see some upward movement. If that happens, then let's hope that they can recover by another 20% uh, next year hopefully okay so uh, this is going to be the uh, outlook for the whole year 2022 and the week as well so in the short term um, for Hang Seng we are looking at resistance at 24361 and then uh, the uh, support at 22637 so these two support these two levels are very important because Hang Seng if you want to break in to uptrend recover, re into uptrend, uh, we are looking at um, the reasons to break. So if we can recover from where you close off in 2021, um, another 18% upside. Why, why I push to an 18% upside or somewhere around this level? Mainly because um, we want to be conservative and then um, going halfway back where it has came down, uh, from the peak uh, is a conservative uh, projections. Uh, also, if you were to uh, look at this, this was a key uh, support level and uh, it would turn into a major resistance if it get tested again. So if I were to show you some example, um, yeah, this is the one that I want to show you. This was uh, 2018, 2019, we see market recovery from the bottom. 
And uh, what you can see is that the self-fulfilling prophecy around here, look at this major support over here. Look at Hang Seng from, from 2018 bottom recover all the way to this major support term resistance and then all the way down again. Okay, so self-fulfilling prophecy may come back again. So I right, uh, wish everyone a good year ahead in 2022 and uh, all of us what and if you like this video, please uh, circulate and forward to your friends. Thank you very much. And then I will see you again.